Hi everybody, my name is Carmel. I'm from Little Gem Puppets and when I first started working with puppets I learned that they are a very very old art form. They're thousands of years old and it's practiced in many many countries worldwide and there are many different types of puppets. So we have some puppets in our studio and I thought we might take a look at them. Here's Maggie. So um, Maggie would be called a moving mouth puppet because her mouth can move. Um, these puppets would be very young. They're less than a century old. Um, the first of these types of puppets that became well known would have been um, from the Muppet Show. Um, so she's a moving mouth puppet and um, let's see if Maggie has something to say. Hi. My name is Maggie and um, well I, I don't like to talk about it but I'm actually a puppet. I have to get someone to help me to come to life. Um, uh, anyway, uh, the thing is when I do come to life I can't stop talking. I, I just, I, I have so much to say but um, they told me not to say too much today so I suppose I better not. But uh, anyway, um, I better go. Goodbye! Vilnoff is an alien prince. Um, he is also a rod puppet. So he's got a, a rod coming from the back of his head. So the more complicated puppets have more moving parts. Some puppets don't even have any moving parts. Um, he's also got his hands operated on a rod and he would be coming from the Bunraku traditional puppetry. So um, that started in Japan and there are some beautifully crafted Bunraku puppets in Japan. Um, and they're only like, you know, maybe three centuries old. So they're also pretty young puppets. Rama and Sinta have their very own myth. They're, they're, they come from like, thousands of years ago. These are pretty new puppets but um, the character pup puppet characters Rama and Sinta are thousands of years old and they come from a Hindu myth called Ramayana. Um, so this puppet is on a rod. Its um, shoulders can twist around the rod and it's got its hands on a rod. So um, they would have come from India, so from the east and puppetry really did come from the East. Was the shadow puppet. There we go, a shadow puppet. Um, the first shadow puppets were made to entertain a Chinese emperor. Um, you can have great fun making shadow puppet characters. Here we have Mr. Fork and Mrs. Knife. And um, what's their story? A glove puppet. These are also fairly, fairly new types of puppets. Um, this puppet, I think, might be a little bit lost. Oh, hi. I'm lost. I can't find my mum. Maybe she's over here. So this is a marionette or a string puppet. Um, marionettes are moved by strings and you can see the strings are attached to different parts so this this puppet's hands are attached to strings um, its legs are also attached to strings and there's a control at the top that um, you use to control it and this puppet's head is on a rod sock puppet and sock puppets can be simple or complicated this puppet has something inside the mouth to make the mouth um, open a little better. You can you just get a sock and stick two eyes in it and that's your sock puppet if you want. Um. Hi everybody, my name is Carmel. I'm from Little Gem Puppets and today we are going to look at how to make a puppet from a wooden spoon. So there are loads of ways to do it. I'm going to show you some of my ideas and hopefully when this video is finished you'll have some ideas of your own. 
important that every puppet should have at least one eye. We're going to look at that. And you also need to think about how will I make my puppet strong? So when you are attaching something to your puppet, how do you do it in a way that it won't fall off? I am going to give this spoon here some eyes. I have cut out two circles of card and I stuck some blue tack on the back of them. You could also use glue or some sellotape. I've used a black marker to put a black pupil in the middle of the two circles. Um, you could also use paint and I have stuck them on. What I have done is I have already painted the puppet a lovely red colour. Um, I have glued on some black card to give it a kind of a crown or maybe a hat. Um, I painted on the eyes and the mouth and let's have a look and see how would this look if I used a pipe cleaner to make arms which would be very strong and would definitely not fall off if I wrap it properly. Now another puppet that I made is this dog puppet and what I did was I drew out a shape um, on my felt to, to um, it's a shape of two ears and the back of the dog's head and I glued that onto the stick so that made it really good and strong because I've um, plenty of glue surface area that's where the um, felt is contacting the spoon so there's lots lots of glue and it's made it very strong and also I have um, used some felt for the eyes and felt for the nose and I painted on a, um, the muzzle. So that's that's the dog puppet. Now I'm going to take this wooden spoon and I'm going to paint some hair and a face on it and I'm also going to give it a dress. Those are some of my ideas. There are many, many other ways to make a wooden spoon puppet and hopefully now you'll have some of your own ideas. Uh, so have fun experimenting and bye from Little Gem Puppets. I just heard there, little Bo Peep has lost her sheep and she doesn't know where to find them. So, uh, well, if anyone out there knows anything about it, just you should give me a call and uh, I'll, I'll tell them down the station. Right. Um, my name is little Bo Peep and I've lost my sheep. I don't know where to find them. Um, my dad said... Leave them alone and they'll come home and they'll probably be dragging their tails behind them. I better go look for them. So if you have a puppet and you want to tell a story with it, those are some ways to think about how to get it to move. And I hope you have great fun doing it. Thanks for watching and bye from Little Gem Puppets.